Good morning, everyone. My name is Cameron Webb, and I'll be presenting my research, which investigated the effects of deep water running on pain, disability, and function in patients with chronic low back pain. It was a systematic review and meta-analysis. So let's start with the definition of low back pain. Low back pain is defined as pain of the back between the lower ribs and upper gluteal folds. Low back pain becomes chronic when it lasts longer than 12 weeks. Low back pain is the leading contributor to years lived with disability. It is the fifth most common reason for a doctor's visit, and eight out of 10 people will have low back pain at some point in their life. Chronic low back pain accounts for 20% of all low back pain, and its costs in the US per year are between 84 and $624 billion when considering both direct and indirect costs. Despite chronic low back pain only accounting for 20% of all low back pain, it's responsible for 80% of its direct healthcare costs. Initial treatment for chronic low back pain typically follows a conservative multidisciplinary approach, including pharmacology, physical therapy, and psychological treatments. As for physical therapy, multidisciplinary functional rehab has been shown to be effective in relieving pain, reducing disability, and increasing function. Evidence shows that exercise therapy reduces pain and disability in patients with chronic low back pain more than alternative care and it is more effective than hands-on treatment for improving pain, physical function, and mental health. Research has also highlighted active therapies such as Pilates, yoga, resistance training, motor control exercise, and aerobic exercise as the most effective in reducing pain in patients with chronic low back pain. Literature on aquatic exercise finds it both safe and effective in improving disability, function, and physical health related quality of life when compared to many land-based interventions. Despite this, a systematic review by Itz et al. concluded that 66% of clinically treated chronic low back pain patients still experienced pain one year after symptom onset, indicating that exploration of other potential interventions could benefit patients with chronic low back pain. One of these interventions should be deep water running. Deep water running is performing the running motion in water deep enough so that the feet do not touch the bottom surface. A flotation device, such as a buoyancy vest, is worn to allow users head to remain above water while maintaining an upright posture underneath the surface. Several studies have found that deep water running has many benefits. A whole body exercise, which engages the entire spine, studies show that deep water running improves overall mobility, strength, and muscular endurance. More specifically, some studies have recorded increased activation of important trunk, core, and spinal stabilizers with deep water running. The buoyancy of water also significantly decreases weight bearing on stress, joints, bones, and muscles. And finally, research suggests deep water running as a safe and effective alternative to land-based exercise. There are some gaps in the literature, however. Research is inconclusive about the effects of deep water running on pain, disability, and function in patients with chronic low back pain, as well as its differences in effect compared to more common treatments. There is also no identified best protocol for prescribing deep water running to patients with chronic low back pain. And finally, there have been no systematic reviews or meta-analysis on the subject. The idea behind my research is that if exercise therapy and active therapies are most effective in treating chronic low back pain, and the deep water environment provides added benefits such as increased activation of important spinal musculature and decreases stress on joints, then deep water running will be the ideal exercise for patients with chronic low back pain. This brings us to our research question. Is deep water running effective in decreasing pain and disability and increasing function in patients with chronic low back pain? The null hypotheses are that deep water running will have no difference in effect on pain, disability, or function, chronic low back pain when compared to other treatment programs. The alternative hypotheses being that deep water running alone or as part of a chronic low back pain treatment program will improve pain, disability, or function in chronic low back pain when compared to other treatment programs. The population we will be investigating is adults with chronic low back pain. We will be comparing treatment programs which include deep water running with treatment programs which do not include deep water running and investigating their effects on pain, disability, and function. The following databases were searched using a combination of mesh and keywords as seen here. The search included all available publications through January 2021 and expected findings include five to 10 articles of level 2B evidence or greater. Here are the inclusion and exclusion criteria used to determine the article eligibility. Articles must study the effect of deep water running on chronic low back pain and be level 2B evidence or greater. 
Participants younger than 18 and older than 65 were excluded to direct results to only adult chronic low back pain. Low back pain associated with pregnancy, cancer, or surgery was also excluded. The following outcome measures were available for meta-analysis. For pain, the visual analog scale. For disability, either the Roland Morris Disability Questionnaire or the Oswestry Low Back Disability Index. And for function, either the 12 item short form survey or the six minute walk test. As for data analysis, the following process was completed for all variables. Means and standard, standard deviations were extracted from the articles and were used to calculate within and between group effect sizes and 95% confidence intervals. A Q heterogeneity statistic was then calculated to determine the most appropriate model for pooling, either fixed effect or random effects. And then the grand effect sizes and 95% confidence intervals were calculated. The individual effect size, grand effect size, and confidence interval were then recorded on a forest plot. Pooled effect sizes were then converted back into clinical units to evaluate for clinical efficacy. My search yielded 195 articles after duplicates were removed. After screening, four articles remained for inclusion in this study. Articles were primarily excluded for not studying the effect of deep water running as an intervention. Here's a summary of the four studies which were included in this meta-analysis. All of the studies were randomized control trials of level 2B evidence. A total of 175 participants were used, and all of the studies progressed participants from moderate intensity to vigorous intensity exercise based on individualized parameters using either RPE or heart rate. Creval et al. randomized participants into one of two groups, either aquatic exercise or aquatic exercise plus deep water running. Both groups received 40 minutes of aquatic exercise, while the experimental group received an additional 20 minutes of deep water running. They did this two times per week for nine weeks, and scores for pain, disability, and function were taken at baseline nine weeks and three-month follow-up. Results of the study found improvements in pain, disability, and function for both groups between group analysis found significant reductions in pain in favor of the deep water running group. Candidates at all randomized participants into one of two groups, either deep water running and walking or land running and walking. Both groups participated in a 45 minute training protocol two times per week for 12 weeks. Pain and disability were assessed and results concluded reduced disability in both groups, but found that there was no difference in effect between groups. Quest of Argus 2012 found or record, uh, randomized participants into one of two groups, either general practice or general practice plus deep water running. Both groups received general practice for treating chronic low back pain, which consisted of one primary care visit, which included education on anatomy of the spine, principles of ergonomics, and exercises for chronic low back pain. The deep water running group also received 30 minute sessions of deep water running three times a week for 15 weeks. Pain, disability, and function were taken at baseline, four months, six months, and 12 months. Six month and 12 month reporting corresponds to two month and eight month follow up, respectively. Results of the study found improved pain, disability, and function in favor of the deep water running group. Quest of Argus et al. 2011 randomized participants into one of two groups either multimodal physical therapy or multimodal physical therapy plus deep water running. Both groups received a combination of mobility exercise motor control activities, and resistance training for 60 minutes. The deep water running group received an additional 20 minute session of deep water running. They did this three times a week for 15 weeks. Pain, disability, and function were assessed at baseline in 15 weeks. Results found improvements in pain, disability, and function for both groups, and that there was no difference in effect between the groups. Now we will move on to pooled analysis. The following forest plot represents our results for within group analysis to determine if deep water running treatment programs are effective in improving pain, disability, and function in chronic low back pain. Pooled analysis results in a large effect size for all of our outcomes. The confidence intervals did not cross zero, indicating a statistically significant improvement in pain, disability, and function as a result of deep water running treatment programs. Conversion of effect sizes back into clinical units equated to a clinically important improvement on the visual analog scale, the Roland Morse and the SF12. The fall, this following forest plot represents our results for within group analysis at two to three months following treatment termination to determine if benefits received from deep water running were maintained. Pooled analysis resulted in large effect sizes for pain and disability reduction. The confidence intervals for pain and disability did not cross zero, 
indicating a statistically significant reduction in pain and disability were maintained at two to three months following treatment termination. Pooled analysis resulted in a moderate effect size for function, but the confidence interval did cross zero, indicating that a statistically significant reduction in function was not observed. Conversion of the effect sizes back into clinical units did equate to clinically important improvements on the visual analog scale, the Roland Morris disability questionnaire, and the SF12 at two to three months follow-up. And finally, the following forest plot represents our results for between group analysis, which compared deep water running programs to non-deep water running programs. Pooled analysis resulted in moderate effect sizes for all of our outcomes. The confidence intervals for disability and function did not cross zero, indicating a statistically significant difference in disability reduction and functional increase in favor of the deep water running group. A statistically significant difference in pain was not observed, however. Conversion of effect sizes back into clinical units equated to clinically important difference in improvement on the SF12 in favor of the deep water running group, but a clinically important difference was not observed for pain or disability. This is a summary of our meta-analysis findings. This might look a little bit overwhelming, but we will now break it down and dive into what it means. First, let's revisit our research question. Based on the results, we can reject our null hypotheses and we can accept several of our, our alternative hypotheses. Deep water running leads to a significant reduction in pain and disability and a significant increase in function. It also has significant difference in improvement in disability and function compared to treatment programs which do not include deep water running. Statistical and clinical significance was found for all of our within group analysis, indicating that deep water running treatment programs are effective in improving pain, disability, and function in chronic low back pain. This supports previous research that a multidisciplinary functional rehabilitation program is effective in improving pain, disability, and function. It is important to note that deep water running was the only constant between these programs. While the individual exercise programs, including aquatic therapy, general practice, and a multimodal physical therapy program were effective without the use of deep water running, they all became more effective with the addition of deep water running. Duration of program ranged from nine to 15 weeks and longer protocols consistently led to larger effect sizes. The largest effect size was consistently seen in Quest of Argus et al. 2012, which investigated deep water running plus general practice versus general practice alone for 15 weeks. General practice consisted of one primary care visit with low back pain education, so most of the effect can be attributed to the addition of deep water running. Within group analysis at two to three months follow-up found statistical significance and improvement in pain and disability. Some potential reasons for this result include improvements immediate post-treatment may have allowed users to return to an active and health-promoting lifestyle, which helped maintain their progress. Also, the psychological role of increased movement capacity in the aquatic environment may have played a role, but needs further investigation. Only two studies investigated if effects of deep water running were maintained at two to three months following treatment termination, and only one study investigated if effects were maintained for longer than two to three months. Quest of Argus et al. 2012 investigated the effects if they were maintained for eight months following treatment termination and found that significant improvements in pain, disability, and function were maintained eight months post-treatment termination. Between group analysis indicated that the addition of deep water running significantly reduces disability and increases function in patients with chronic low back pain when compared to treatment programs, programs that do not utilize deep water running. Several factors may contribute to these findings. Deep water running strengthens important spinal and core musculature, including the rectus abdominis, transversus abdominis, obliquus abdominis externus, erector spinae, and lumbar multifidus, which are commonly contributed as a cause of chronic low back pain. Greater strength gains can be attributed to water drag, which provides subtle and consistent resistance, which further improve these benefits. And finally, deep water running reduces spinal compression compared to land-based exercise. The impact of on-land aerobic exercise on the spine may be unfavorable due to increased axial loading. An alternative interpretation of the results can be explained by differences in treatment time between experimental and control groups. In three of the studies, the experimental group performed the same program as the control group, but included an additional 20 to 30 minutes of deep water running. Results may have been observed in the experimental group due to receiving an extra 20 to 30 minutes of overall exercise rather than the effect coming from deep water running. 
Canets et al. had equal treatment time between the experimental group and the control group and found no differences in effect between groups. Statistical and clinical significance were not obtained for the outcome of pain. This was not expected due to the idea that decreased spinal loading in deep water running compared to land-based therapy would be beneficial for decreasing pain. One potential reason for this is due to an outlier study, which while not statistically significant, was in favor of the control group for pain reduction. Potential reasons for this discrepancy include a small sample size of 14 leading to decreased power, differences in duration of symptoms between groups leading to differences in rates of change, and a low frequency of treatment only two times per week, limiting results from being attributed to the intervention. As for harm, only one study reported on adverse events and indicated that no side effects or adverse events were recorded in either group. Eight subjects in total dropped out of all the studies and none were attributed to results of deep water running. None of the included studies mentioned cost, but to utilize deep water running, access to a pool is required. The cost of a clinic owned pool is unknown, but it's expected to have high upfront costs and high costs of maintenance. The flotation device used in deep water running costs between 20 and $50. And as for time requirements, protocols of deep water running included two to three times per week over a nine to 15 week period for a total of between 18 and 45 sessions. Therefore, represents a substantial commitment and time requirement for the patient, as well as high costs in insurance. Limitations are as follows. First of all, studies did not use equal treatment time between experimental and control groups, which prevents distinguishing results of deep water running from, from simply increased treatment time. Also, only two studies examined uh, follow-up data and only one study examined follow-up data for longer than three months, preventing longer analysis from being included in this meta-analysis. The six-minute walk test was the only physical outcome measure used, which limits identification of any physical improvements which were responsible for the improvements in pain, disability, or function which were observed. And finally, it was not the main focus of any article to provide a standardized best protocol for prescribing deep water running. So recommendations can only be made based on the protocols which were used. Future studies should compare deep water running treatment programs to non-deep water running treatment programs with equal total treatment time, as well as include data collection longer than one year to determine long-term effects of deep water running. Investigating the a best protocol for prescribing deep water running would also be helpful for use clinically. Research could also look more specifically into the physiological effects of deep water running on core stability, lumbopelvic strength, spinal and hip mobility, and cardiorespiratory fitness in patients with chronic low back pain and correlate pre-test, post-test values with the effects on pain, disability, and function. As for clinical recommendations, deep water running can be prescribed independently or as part of a multimodal physical therapy program for added benefits. Deep water running is highly recommended for patients who cannot effectively perform land-based exercises. And based on the protocols of the included studies, it should be prescribed for 20 to 30 minutes, two to three times per week at a moderate to vigorous intensity and can be progressed by RPE. In conclusion, treatment programs incorporating deep water running improve pain, disability, and function in patients with chronic low back pain. It is inconclusive whether deep water running treatment programs are more effective than non-deep water running treatment programs, or if simply more exercise is beneficial regardless of modality. Increased treatment time, which in this meta-analysis came in the form of deep water running, reduced disability and increased function with greater effect than programs that did not include deep water running or uh, increased treatment time. All in all, the use of deep water running should be considered for treatment of adult chronic low back pain. I'd like to say thank you to all the people that helped uh, me make this happen. Here are my references. And I'd be happy to answer